Hello and welcome to the channel and I'm here for another throwback list video and this time I actually have a guest with me. Please welcome Strong Boys 19. I collabed with him before on his channel so he's going to collab with me on this video and in this video we're going to go over our top five favorite albums of the year 2002 and this is actually a ranked video as well since we both decided that we would go from our least favorite to our favorite in this video. So uh, I guess I will let Greg start with his number five. Okay, so for those that don't know me at all, I am the Strong Boys 19, as Zach says. My YouTube channel, heavily music related, uh, very similar content to what Zach does. I've done tons of album reviews to various updates some live streams and all that great stuff a lot of a variety of genres along the way so if you want to check out my channel feel free to do so so um yeah make yeah, sure to subscribe to greg's channel as well if you haven't already yes uh so 2002 uh a really really good year for music and uh these albums by the way are like great albums and just because uh where we would place these albums in these orders does not mean that one of them's like uh, weaker or uh, favorable than the other because we really like these albums so much Correct. so that's that's basically all this is guys so uh yeah so my number five my fifth favorite album of 2002 is corns untouchables so the reason why I put this at number five, I really think that this is one of Korn's best albums. And uh, I really do like the very big, heavy production. And of course, with some of the most sinister tracks on this album that are just, you know, frenetic and uh, really aggressive. So many great songs. Obviously, you've got tracks like here to stay and thoughtless but then you got some other great tracks like bottled up inside make believe and uh, just a lot of these tracks sounded very twisted and uh, this was always one of my favorite corn albums i i'm always um, the biggest fan of the 90s era but in terms of some of the early 2000s albums from corn i think this is easily the best one in their discography so yeah brilliant album just one of my favorites in their discography so that's why this album is at number five yeah corn is a very uh respectable band i think um they were a band i actually thought about looking into before i just never really got around to it though um maybe it's because i was never into them when i was younger you know so that's why I haven't really checked them out yet, but they are a band that I have respect. Uh, and I also checked out a couple of their albums before. I don't believe I, I've heard that one, though. Yeah, so uh, Untouchables has been known as like one of the, the most beloved ones in their discography as well. I mean, uh, a, lot, a lot of people pick the first album as their their favorite and best corn album. But uh, I think this is an excellent album with just some of the most hateful and uh, darkest uh, sizes of instrumentation. Hmm. Yeah, I think their debut was one of the only ones I've heard, actually. Okay, so for my number five, this album is by the band In Flames, uh, probably my favorite in the mellow death subgenre. And for this video, for um, my number five pick, I got to go with uh, the In Flames album, Reroute to Remain. And to me, this was, for a while, their last really, really good album. I know some people say that Clay Man, which came out a couple years prior, was their last good album for a while at least. But for me, um, I, think, I think that really ended with this album. This album actually has a lot of very strong tracks. The title track... Uh, free Fall. Free Fall is just an epic sounding song. Um, of course, you got um, other really great tracks. Minus is kind of an underrated one. 
Yeah, um, interesting instrumentation going on here. They're definitely doing something different at this point. Um, kind of an underrated album from In Flames. Um, I mean, that's really all there is to say about it. Definitely not a bad album. So, Reroutes Remain by In Flames. That's what's coming in at number five for me. Yeah, so uh, In Flames were one of these uh, other bands that I thought started really strongly. And I have pretty much most of the the beloved era from In Flames. And uh, I really do love the Jesser Race, which is my favorite In Flames album. And then you That's got... my favorite too. Yeah, and then you got uh, Horacle, which is one of my favorites. Um I think Clayman is very good as well as um, Colony, but with Reroots Remain, I think that one is like one of their, if not in my opinion, the last very good In Flames album up until they decide to go very melodic and go completely dire with weaker instrumentation, in my opinion, because I thought that's... I thought that In Flames started out very, very good as a melodic death metal band. But uh, to me, they were hitting so many nosedives with the latest stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I have lost interest in Flames after um, after the Siren Charms album. But that's a very good pick for Rio to Remain. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Siren Charms is when they really started going downhill. Hmm. Okay, so my uh, number four pick, I actually do not have the album on CD yet, uh, but number four is Dream Theater's Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. And this album, to me, when I first listened to it, I was absolutely amazed by how very diverse and different the album sounded. Um and this is one of those albums that some people may say that it's like a bit of an underrated album. And uh, Mike Portnoy, funnily enough, uh, did say that it was not meant to be a double album. But, you know, with the way the instrumentation works out, in my opinion, makes it one of the most accessible and uh, uh, versatile sounding Dream Theater albums. And uh I always have loved some of the earlier stuff. Images and Words is one of my favorite albums of all time. And of course, with Awake, which is maybe my second favorite, but I would easily pick Six Degrees as one of my top five. And uh, I really like how uh, different a lot of the tracks really are in terms of the the melodies to the different influences. And uh, I really, really admired the uh the longest track the title track of the album just some very very different explorative sounds of of musicality and james labrie's vocals are wonderful on a lot of dream theater's albums and um i have to say very controversially for some dream theater fans that i may prefer this album in a favorable way over metropolis part two scenes from Mm -hmm. a memory which uh is a very good album, but you know, sometimes in other occasions, I would like to prefer an album like this album over that one. But uh, always a fantastic album, just wonderful instrumentation and performances along the ways with each bandmate working uh, very efficiently. So, yeah, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence by Dream Theater for my number four pick. Not a bad choice. Sounds like an album that'll be later on my list. But yeah, I won't say much about it right now. So for for my number four, this is a band that means a lot to me. This was one of the first bands that I gotten into. Um, I was about 15 or so when I got into these guys. And the band is Breaking Benjamin. And for my number four pick, I got to go with their debut album, Saturate. This album um, is kind of underrated in Breaking Benjamin's discography because most fans do say that this is their worst album, which I don't agree with at all. It's probably my third favorite, personally. Um, 
I just really appreciate the raw sound and the influences that they had at the time. Obviously, you know, they were coming off the whole uh, grunge scene, and this is like post grunge. And, you know, um, this this album has some uh, tool influences as well. And you can definitely hear that in a lot of these tracks, like uh, Natural Life, for example. The album definitely has a lot of very good songs. Of course, Wish I May, Polyamorous, Natural Life, Next to Nothing, uh, No Games, and uh, Shallow Bay. A lot of really great stuff. So, yeah, um, at this time as well in O2, you know, this is when bands like Breaking Benjamin and you know, a lot of hard rock and post grunge bands like that, like this in this era, this is like when these bands, you know, first started coming around. And, you know, I, I think a lot of bands who created different styles of uh, rock and metal took influence um, from this sound to a degree. So Saturate by Breaking Benjamin had to be on the list and it's at number four for me. Yeah, so uh, I actually haven't been uh, very familiar with their material but from what i've heard i think they sounded uh, very talented but uh, now that you've mentioned breaking benjamin i will have to check them out but i believe i have heard uh one single or two and i thought that they, they sounded pretty good so i'll have to obviously dive into their music yeah um not my they're not exactly my preferred style of rock these days but i I still do like them for nostalgia reasons, of course. Yes, of course. All right, so on that note, what is your number three pick? Right, my number three, uh, this album is um, probably my main favorite album from this solo artist. And uh, if you have not seen uh, a video that I've done with Zach, we did a video on the top 10 Iron Maiden songs. And I have, well, we have mentioned about this artist before, but this is one of his solo albums. My number three pick is Blaze Bailey with 10th Dimension. And this album to me is absolutely fantastic. And uh, this was the very first Blaze album that I've ever heard and bought. And uh, I had bought this when I went to see him live for the very first time. And uh, as you can see, maybe, here's the signature done mm. by him. Um, but with this album, this is where, obviously, he begins his solo career, as I do have his first solo album. But this does have some of the catchiest and most memorable stuff that Blaze has ever done. Some of these guitar riffs and instrumentations are very metal driven and just so so well executed in performances uh just a lot of these these tracks deliver so well and i think blaze's vocals when he went solo after iron maiden he was improving so massively and i really like some of these bangers on here you got kill and destroy the 10th dimension Land of the Blind and uh, Speed of Light. This is just something uh, very upbeat and straight to the point, you know, balls to the wall, heavy metal goodness. And uh, this was also produced, engineered and mixed by Andy Snape, as some of you guys may be very familiar, as he's done many albums in in those roles. But highly recommend some of his early solo stuff from blaze bailey and uh this is just one of the the best solo albums that i have checked out just something very catchy melodic and just a, a menacing action packed full of of energy so 10th dimension by blaze bailey yeah, Blaze Bailey, uh, that's a solo artist that I really got to look more into because I actually, I did check out his latest release back in uh, April, was it? Mm. And I really did enjoy that one. So if, if his solo stuff is like anything like that, I'll probably end up uh, liking a lot of his solo work then. Yeah, so I believe that Blaze's solo discography, um, for a lot of the fans... 
um, his solo work does get a lot of the uh, the acclaim. And when he went solo, I guess people were not really expecting to hear something uh, from him as a solo artist. But I will very much recommend anyone and yourself, obviously, to dive into his solo stuff because, yes, a lot of people were very critical when he was with Iron Maiden at the time, but look no further when you can look into his solo albums. Yeah, I will have to check those out. All right, so my number three is from one of the bands that got me into metal uh, back seven or so years ago, and the band is Demon Hunter, and what I have is their debut album, the self-titled, and like I said, with uh, Breaking Benjamin's debut, there are some people that say that this is Demon Hunter's weakest album for some reason. Um, but I, re- I really do like this one. Again, with the amount of influence that the band had at the time, this was also at this, you know, the um, early 2000s metalcore stage. And, you know, when it comes to metalcore, I mean, the early 2000s was just where it was at, in my opinion. And, I mean, this is a heavy one for sure. I mean, the amount of influences, of course, they they have so many influences, such as with genres like grunge, mellow death, um, uh, new metal, of course, and obviously metalcore. And this album, some people say, is Demon Hunter's new metal album. And I can definitely see why, because this album definitely showcases a lot of their Slipknot influences and... If you're a fan of early Slipknots, you will probably enjoy this one. But yeah, a lot of really great stuff on this album. Screams of the Undead, Infected, My Throat is an Open Grave, Through the Black. A lot of really solid stuff. So Demon Hunter's debut. I really do like this one. And I do believe that uh, Ryan Clark or one of the band members stated that, um, or at least this is a rumor that I heard, but... Apparently, they, they want to do something special next year for a 20th anniversary of this album, which I'm not sure what they're going to do since they are releasing their new album, Exile, probably early 2022. So maybe we'll get something special uh, regarding the debut later uh, in the year. So, yeah. So Demon Hunter, the debut album, that's what's at number three. Awesome. And uh, funnily enough, when I had started doing my album reviews, one of the first ones, it was one of Demon Hunter's albums, and I really like uh, how melodic and different they can really be in, in the, the versatility of their albums. And uh, I thought that Demon Hunter as a band, obviously being very, very talented, but um, I think that they are one of those other bands that I find to be uh, I guess pretty underrated and not as yeah, like definitely. yeah pretty underrated and not as like well acclaimed but I will have to I will have to revisit that band at some point now that you've you brought that album up but I really liked um, uh, one of their albums from uh, the early 2010s and I, I think I think it was um, was the it album. I think it was True Defiance. That was the album that I did review from them, and I really enjoyed that one a lot. So, yeah, because I'll have to come back. I, I remember. I think I remember checking out your review like a few years or so back, actually, for that uh, review for that album. Yeah. So, I think I will like. I will be more than likely to discover myself back into Demon Hunter, but. Uh, that's a very good band that you picked. Yeah, man. All right, so what is your number two? My number two album, uh, this is uh, their very underrated album, and uh, this has been their most overlooked, in my opinion, in the band's discography, and it is from one of my very favorite uh, first experiences of discovering metal, and that is... Steal this album by System of a Down. So I always have loved a lot of the 
the track listing onto this album. I love tracks like Chicken Stew to Inner Vision, uh, Mr. Jack, I.E. A.I.A.I.O. to Fuck the System. This was this was in the making around the time when System of Down were making Toxicity. So you can immediately hear the very alike production value on here. Um, but I'll have to personally admit, while I think a lot of their albums, even though they've made five, hopefully they'll make another album. But uh, their discography is one of my favorites, not just because of the very brief few minutes of these uh, manic to funny, frenetic, wild instrumentation of, of material, but I find that some tracks on here are excellent and one of their most underrated gems in the band's discography. And uh, what I also love is just that minimal look of the um, album cover and the way it's released as like a CDR type of design. Yeah which I think I think really does does suit the kind of gimmick. But, I mean, vocals-wise, uh, Tankian and Malakian together, just fantastic. And I will have to personally think that it's their very underrated album. And I really like the later albums, like of Hypnotize and Mesmerize. But sometimes I would pick this album as one of my... Uh, one of my top favorites. So I always love this album, just near perfect. My favorite obviously being Toxicity because it's one of the greatest albums of the 2000s and their magnum opus. But I have always admired so much stuff onto this album. So System of a Down with Steal This Album and my number two. Nice. Yeah, uh, System of a Down is another band that I've been, I've been kind of off and on with. Like, I have listened to their album Toxicity in Full, and I think that is a very good album. Um, and I believe I heard some stuff from, uh, I think Mesmerize was it, and their self-titled album. But I haven't really heard much besides those. Actually, I, I don't think I've heard anything from uh, that album in particular. I think they're a pretty solid band, though, from yeah. what I've heard. Yeah, I know that some people may give System of a Down a lot of flack because of the way they sound and the way they make this kind of music in that type of way. But when you th actually think about it, I think they are one of the most important modern metal bands as that a lot of a lot of lyrics are very deep and serious. And I personally, not that I'm a political person myself, but right. I think that a lot of the lyrics on their music have been very relevant from then to today. But I have always loved more of the instrumental side, but I can see why they've been a very important band for a lot of the lyrical contents. That's just, you know, something that not a lot of metal bands of modern metal could really do. Um, but I think that System of a Down are one of those most important alternative metal masters. So, yeah. Nice. All right, so for my number two, uh, this is an album that I think most people would not have on the list, especially this high, since this is regarded as one of the weakest albums uh, from this band. I might agree with that, but even in saying that, I still think it's a very, very strong album, because this band has no bad albums. So the band I am, of course, talking about is Rush, and the album that I have on this list at number two is their album Vapor Trails. And what can I say? I think the album is a bit underrated, especially since you got really great songs on here, like One Little Victory, uh, How It Is, probably one of the most underrated songs of the 2000s era of Rush. Uh, the title track's pretty good. Earthshine is probably the best song on the album, in my opinion. At least the best song in the second half of the album, anyway. But, yeah, there's a lot to like about this album. Yeah, it's not as proggy as earlier Rush material. Uh, the album definitely leans on a more heavier side on this album, and I believe that some of these songs are actually a bit personal for their drummer, Neil Peart, because I, I do think that he went through some kind of 
loss in the late 90s, I think it was. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think uh, Ghost Rider kind of uh, refers to that. Uh, that's a pretty good song. But yeah, I mean, a lot of really great stuff on this album. So yeah, and Rush is, of course, one of my favorite bands. So maybe I'm just biased, and that's why the album is... Um, rather high up on this list but i do think it's a very strong album even though it's not one of their best so vapor trails by rush that's what at that's that is what's at number two always love some rush and you can't go wrong with just some of their classics like my favorite rush album so far is 2112 and mm. that was the first one that i actually bought and got into rush but then you've got others like Grace Under Pressure, to Moving Pictures, and Signals. But Vapor Trials, that is actually one of the albums I have to dive into because for now I've heard a lot of their um, 70s to some of the 80s stuff. But apparently it was Vapor Trails. Uh, it was a very controversial album in terms of production because yeah. a lot of people say that it's way too compressed. That's why they have to re-release the album again in a a much better form of the, the sound of the album. But yeah, a uh, very difficult album for Neil as as he went through a lot of loss from his family, uh, from the, the background in a personal wise throughout the making of the album. But uh, that is one of those albums that I will have to dive into. But, uh, you know, if you don't love or like Rush at all, I think... Chances are you need to discover, I think, some of the the most versatile and uh, I will say very melodic and uh, artistic ones of progressive rock. And Alex Lifeson's always one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Well, to be honest, Rush as a band, one of the best trios of all time. Yeah, definitely. Um, like if you do go into this album, like don't expect, you know, anything as masterful as say 2112 or moving pictures uh but i still think this is a pretty good album and worth checking out so yeah uh so what is your number one album of 2002 my number one album of 2002 um i think that this album is pretty much like a near perfect album it's not my favorite album from this band as i have decided to do the discography uh separate album reviews for this band recently and uh my number one pick for 2002 is remission by mastodon and i think that obviously this is their heaviest work in terms of their whole albums but the one I got actually is a, uh, a 2014 Relapse Records uh, re-release, so you get the embossed uh, look of the logo, and you get... Yeah, it looks like a digibook kind of thing. Yeah, it's a digibook with the CD inside, you've got the sticker and the uh, uh, stock in booklet with the artwork and the lyrics. But as an album, for a debut, this was just a monster of a debut record. You got some of their heaviest, massive stuff of aggression on this album. You got Crusher Destroyer to March of the Fire Ants to Trampled Under Hoof and Trainwreck to Workhorse. This is where Macedon were really finding themselves uh, in terms of, you know, presenting to the world what a band like these guys can really do and for for a lot of modern metal bands mastodon's always one of the greatest in my opinion and uh, they are one of my top 10 metal bands of all time and uh, i am also very anticipated for their new album and i know that a lot of mastodon fans are like either critical or just you know praising some of their newer stuff but with Earlier albums like this album, Remission does have a lot of these uh, firing and just a ma manic sounds of some of the best guitar riffs to the, the best drumming. And, uh, you know, I think that this is just one of those 
very strong metal debut albums for any metal band really this this just goes in alongside you know other great metal debuts like Slipknot's first album to Black Sabbath etc and you know you, you you can't go wrong with a lot of the a lot of the intensity that this album really has and some of the melodic arrangements especially on hearing the acoustic guitars and the um the the quietening down moments of some gentle atmospheric instrumentation on some of the tracks um but this is just a wonderful amazing debut album from mastodon and uh, this is this is added into my top five and obviously i've not reviewed all of their albums yet but i did review this one and leviathan so far and um i will also do a re-review of one small round the sun because i did review that one when it came out but um for their heaviest effort of music remission to me has to be one of the top best albums of 2002 so that's why this album is at number one nice yeah mastodon is uh actually a band i never really took the time to look into i mean i've heard really great things about them before but it's actually kind of surprising i haven't really looked into their discography much or at least one of their albums actually i will definitely recommend you starting out the album of leviathan and crack the sky because crack the sky as an album is one of my top 10 albums of all time and with each mastodon album with what i think of them each album has a journey and with an album like crack the sky that is a journey to behold so also with Blood Mountain, most Mastodon fans would say that's their best album or Crack the Sky as well. But uh, I think with Mastodon's discography is one of my all time favorites from any metal band. So I would highly recommend the time for you to check out their discography. Yeah, I definitely will have to sometime. OK, so are you ready for my number one? All so, right. All right, so number one, this is actually the only album that <laughs> me and Greg both have on our list, and it is, of course, Dream Theater, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. Dream Theater is probably one of my favorite bands and probably my favorite progressive metal band, which might be mainstream to say since they are probably the biggest progressive metal band out there. But you know what? I think this is a very solid album. You can tell that Dream Theater, at this point, while they still had their progressive sound, you could tell that, you know, they're going in a more heavier, they went into this album with a more heavier approach. Uh, more so with Train of Thought, but it really did start showing with this album, I think. Uh, I believe that, uh, in fact, Train of Thought picks up right where the title track of this album leaves off mm -hmm. um if i if i believe i heard that somewhere um but yeah this this album has a lot of really great songs of course the glass prison it's just fast-paced epic and it's maybe my favorite song on the album uh of course blind faith is kind of underrated um misunderstood is pretty good and of course the epic title track that has uh all these different parts and it's just fantastic i mean it's not my favorite dream theater album but um it might be in the top five i'm not sure but i mean it would definitely be an honorable mention if not anyway so yeah definitely a very strong album so six degrees of inner turbulence by dream theater i would consider this album to be my favorite album of 2002. awesome pick and for for the album as musicians like albums like awake to metropolis part two i think that six degrees is one of those amazing examples where each bandmate sounded very tight and so precise and 
there's just so much of that diversity that the album really has. And that's why I always admired Dream Theater to go into various different routes. Um, and I think that their discography has been just a, a, a very adventurous one at that. But for progressive metal, uh, my favorite prog metal band is, is has to go to Mastodon. But Dream Theater, you know, obviously for the impact, the success, and just how um, how still relevant these these masters are in progressive metal. Even going through some various lineup ch lineup changes along the ways, but with an album like Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, I think this is one of their most melodic. And to hear one of James Labrie's very best vocals, and I admire his vocals so much on a lot of their albums, but you can't go wrong with just some of the versatility. And it's like it's like when Black Sabbath have made the album Sabotage, which some of the tracks sound very different from each other because some songs are heavy and some of the later tracks incorporate some softness and a lot of these uh, progressive uh, arrangements uh, like The Rit, for example, and Symptom of the Universe because of how different the tracks really are when they expanded. But that's how I would think about something like Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. Um, but that is just a fantastic album by itself and uh, just one of my favorite Dream Theater albums in their discography all the way through. Yeah, I actually do know it's a favorite for some people. Like some people even prefer it over albums like Awake and Images and Words, which I, while I don't agree with, I can definitely respect. Because it really is just a uh, really great album, and it's, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, really fantastic. So, yeah, uh, so it's got to be my number one. So, with that being said, um, that is our list, me and Greg's list, for our top five favorite albums of the year 2002. So, let us know, what are your top five favorite albums of the year 2002? So, feel free to leave that in the comments. So on that note, uh, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe. Also subscribe to Greg's channel, Strong Boys 19, if you haven't already. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and 